whether the taking of tobacco does a man good or hurt. Answer. Mr. Osborne, in his famous advice to his son, made up only of his own experiences, tells him that he himself had taken it from 610 to 60, without ever finding it did him one bit of either good or harm. And the same we are apt to believe many more might say if they'd be but ingenious. However, it's certain enough that in this case, as well as all others, circumstances differ widely. What's one man's sustenance and medicine is another's poison. Granted, tobacco may be of excellent yours to moist and phlegmatic constitutions by drying up or draining off what would else offend nature. But on the other side, it's almost as much a poison to a dry and choleric person as the all of it is to a kitten when dropped on its tongue or conveyed into its flesh, rendering him eat more fragrant and choleric and even endangering the throne him into a frenzy. Especially if taken any great quantity, for a little poison can do but little mischief, and indeed, it's the quantity, after all, that may seem to denominate it either profitable or hurtful. We have known some such gluttons as it is to smark upwards of thirty pipes a day, and others so taken with it that they can do almost nothing else. There's extremes it was we may believe which brought about all of the wits of the age against it when it first came to England, if we may rather be tempted to suspect. It was King James, the first royal pen being engaged in the cause, and proclaiming open war against it, which made all other riders draw on the same side. Though could that prince have known what vast revenue this plant would in a few ages have brought to the crowd, he could scarcely have had the heart to be so merciful against it, as well as all the little pot-gun squirrels which we find in that age against poor tobacco. Nor has the world quite done with it yet. Johann Heydrich Moibom in a treatise of his De Servicis and Ibriamibus Alice on Bear and Other Drinks, printed at Elmstadt in 1668, mentions this among other narcotic films, and is withal very witty upon it, applying thereunto what Virgil says a cacus, which, if you were disposed to be merry, take thus, or somewhat like them, impure sternhold, forth from his jaws, vast smark he draws, O oh, strange and wondrous sight! He draws and spears, and fills the house with mingled fire and night. But notwithstanding all this, and no crowned head in Christendom did e'er eat smark, that came to our knowledge, the porters in London, and the good women and children in the West are not like to be one pipe less than they did before, and so we leave them without any further disturbance at their unenvied pleasure.